how much do I need to retire? We are all looking for a simple answer to this question. Some people think you can just take the amount of income that you need in retirement and the average return of the stock market and work back from this to find the amount you'd need. Whilst others use the much more coveted 4% rule, which should, in theory, prevent you from running out of money even if you see the worst stock market returns. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you that even the 4% rule is extremely dangerous and is likely to result in you running out of money. To demonstrate this, I'm going to do a back test of over 100 years of global stock market data to show you just how badly these strategies fail and why. We'll also then look at exactly how much you would have really needed to achieve three different levels of income and the strategies you can employ to increase your chances of success. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is James. I'm a financial planner and this is a place where you can learn to make smarter financial decisions. Every year that you work, you are trading your time for money. When you're young, this is a good trade to make because you've got plenty of time on your hands and no assets. But as your assets grow, that trade starts to become less attractive until you reach a point where you are then able to sustain your quality of life on the assets that you have built up without needing to work. This is known as reaching financial independence and the point at which you reach this is known as your FI number. Having an understanding of what your FI number is is extremely important because if you were to retire before you get there, you run a big risk of running out of money in retirement. Or on the flip side, you might continue working when this is no longer a good trade and you'll find yourself wasting your most precious resource, your time. Each year, millions of people search online to find a system that they can use to work out how much they will need in retirement. And if you've already done this, you've probably come across a number of different strategies or silver bullet solutions to make this easy. Like the 4% rule, where in theory, if you start retirement with a drawdown rate of 4% of your assets and then adjust your income in line with inflation each year, you should be able to avoid running out of money even in the worst market conditions. This is a rule that is used by millions of people across the world, but it's fundamentally flawed. Firstly, the original study upon which the rule is based only looked at a 30 year retirement, whereas nowadays retirements are often 40 or even 50 years long. It also only used US stock market data and further studies have since gone to show that the 4% rule actually fails when you try to apply it to other countries. The 4% rule also fails to take into consideration things like changing spending patterns throughout retirement or things like state pensions. So I wanted to do a much more comprehensive study analyzing global stock market data over much longer periods of time to provide a more realistic picture of exactly how large a pool of assets we would have really needed to provide different levels of income in retirement. To do this, I'm going to be using some backtesting software called Timeline that I often use with clients to stress test their retirement plans. It allows you to input variables like age, life expectancy, level of assets, portfolio asset allocation, and your desired level of income to then stress test this plan against 100 years of historic stock market data to show you your chances of success. The levels of retirement income that we'll be testing today are £20,000, £40,000, and £60,000 per year. To be specific, this is not actually income we're looking for, but this is a level of expenditure that we are looking to be able to maintain because the model itself takes care of things like taxes. We'll also be increasing this level of expenditure in line with inflation each year. So let's start off by looking at what we would need to do to create 20K a year. Let's assume that we're going to be retiring at age 55 and that we'll then live until 95 years old, which there's a roughly 25% chance of us doing. We'll assume we're invested in a globally diversified portfolio of 60% stocks and 40% bonds. And to keep things simple, let's say that this is invested in a normal taxable investment account rather Rather than a pension or an ISA. So the question is, looking back over the last 100 years at all of the possible different times that we could have retired, exactly how large a pool of assets would we have needed to ensure we would have never run out of money, even in the worst scenarios like retiring just before the Great Depression of the 1930s or the high inflation environment of the 1970s? Well, before we do that, let's first take a look at how we would have fared if we'd simply taken the average annual 
annual return of the stock market to work out our FI number? Well, the average annual return of this portfolio over the last 100 years has been 8%. So if we had 250,000 pounds in our investment portfolio and the stock market returned 8% each year, we should see 100% success, right? Well, in reality, this would have failed in 96% of scenarios. And let me explain why. Firstly, we are not drawing down 20,000 pounds every single year, because each year that goes past, we are then adjusting this level of income by inflation so that we can maintain our spending power. So although 250,000 pounds may have worked in nominal terms, it does not work in real terms. If we factor out inflation of 2.5% per year, the real return of this portfolio is actually only 5.5% per year. So if we use that instead of 8%, we would have required a total pool of assets of 336k. But again, even with this, we would have failed in 77% of scenarios. Clearly, if 5.5% is the average return, in roughly 50% of the scenarios, we should expect to see a return that is above this rate. And in 50% of the scenarios, we should expect to see a return that is below this rate. And clearly, any return that is going to be below 5.5% is going to fail. But why then do we see a failure rate of 77%? Well, that has everything to do with the sequence of returns. Let's say you retired in 1970, and I told you that over the next 40 years, you are going to see an average annual real return of 6% a year. You'd probably be pretty happy with that. But what I haven't told you is that over the first 15 years of retirement, the market is going to perform terribly. And if you're drawing out £20,000 a year and your portfolio has fallen in value, you're clearly going to deplete it much quicker. And by the time that the good returns eventually turn up, you would have depleted your portfolio by so much that you will not have been able to recover. So this is where the 4% rule comes in. In theory, a starting withdrawal rate of 4% should hold up even through the worst sequence of returns. 4% would mean that for 20k a year, we would start with a portfolio of £500,000. So let's have a look at what that looks like. It still fails a lot. And the main reason for this is because here we're testing a 40 year retirement, whereas the 4% rule was based on just 30 years. If we reduce the plan time to 30 years, the success rate jumps up to 87 with the rest of these failures coming from the fact that in the original study that the 4% rule is based on, they only looked at US stock market data, whereas here we're using a globally diversified portfolio that has not performed as well. By the way, just because the US has performed well in the past, this is not a reason for us to abandon our global diversification, but it shows us that we have to be careful not to assume that results or rules that we read online will always apply to our own situations. So then, how much would we have actually needed to deliver 20,000 pounds a year and to survive every single possible retirement scenario over the last 100 years? Well, the answer is 650,000 pounds. You'll notice that we've only got a success rate of 99%, which is actually the highest that this figure goes. Just as a little reminder that here we are looking at historical data and that anything can happen in the future. Now, 650,000 pounds is clearly a hell of a lot of money and equates to an initial withdrawal rate of just 3.1%. But before you get disheartened by these high numbers, let's start to make this plan a little bit more realistic. Firstly, a 100% historic success rate is extremely high and is likely to leave you with a big excess at age 95. In 10% of scenarios, we would have had more than 1.6 million pounds left at age 95, and that's in today's money, whilst the median scenario would have left you with 374 thousand pounds. In my opinion, this is too conservative, especially when we know that we can make tactical adjustments to the level of income that we draw throughout retirement to avoid running our money if we do encounter a poor sequence of returns. So instead, let's aim for a success rating of 95%, which would require 627,000 pounds. Now, it's also not likely that we'll spend 20,000 pounds throughout retirement. Instead, we're likely to slow down at some point. So let's model a 25% reduction in expenditure at age 75, which brings our target assets down to 570,000 pounds. Let's also assume that we get a full state pension at age 67, which is currently 9,110 pounds per year, which dramatically reduces our acquired starting pot to just 390. 
k. So you can see that by adding in these other factors, we've gradually reduced our required starting pot from 650k down to a more realistic 390k. However, we are forgetting one thing, cash. In retirement, you are also going to need to have a cash buffer, which is typically between two to five years worth of expenditure, depending on how conservative you want to be. In this example, let's be lean and say we also need to have two years worth of cash, which would actually reduce the required size of our investment portfolio to 370K, but factoring in the cash, we would need a total of 410K. So based on all of these variables, if we wanted to retire at any point over the last 100 years with an inflation adjusted income of 20K per year and have a 95% chance of success, we would have needed 410 thousand pounds. But what about higher levels of income? Well, let's keep all the other variables the same, but increase our target retirement income to 40,000 pounds a year, which then reduces to 30,000 pounds a year at age 75. Well, for this, we would have needed a total of 1.1 million. That's including a 80,000 pound cash buffer. And for 60,000 pounds a year, we would have needed 1.85 million, including a 120,000 pound cash buffer. As for initial drawdown rates, 20,000 pounds is 5.4% of 410k, 40k is 3.6% of 1.1 million, and 60k is 3.3% of 1.85 million. We can draw a higher percentage of our initial assets with 20K because when the state pension kicks in at 67, it then covers a much larger proportion of our required income. We're also able to create the income that we need with very limited levels of tax compared with the larger portfolios. In this example, we've assumed that these assets are held within a general investment account. So the model is calculating any tax from dividends or capital gains that we would need to pay. But just out of interest, if these portfolios were instead held inside pensions, this is how much we would have required. No difference for 20K because again, there's very little tax to pay either way. Slightly better off with a pension at 40K per year and 200K better off at 60K per year. So now we've completed the first part of our investigation. Let's now start to look at what happens if we start to change other variables like the asset allocation of our investment portfolio. What would happen if we were to increase the risk of our portfolio by increasing the amount that we hold in stocks from 60% to 100%. For 20K per year, we've reduced the starting amount required by 53K. For 40K, it's down by 150K. And for 60K, it's down by 250K. Quite a big difference. And what if we reduced the risk of our portfolio to 30% stocks and 70% bonds? Again, a big shift in the opposite direction. Now, please don't go away and suddenly start ramping up the risk of your portfolios because there are a lot of other things that you need to take into consideration before doing this. But as you can see, although we have increased the risk of our investment portfolio, by having a higher allocation to stocks, we've actually increased our chances of success in retirement. Risk means different things to different people. And having a good understanding of the risks that you should care about is really important. And we'll be diving into this in a lot more detail in upcoming videos. Okay, so now let's look what happens when we change another variable. Instead of retiring at 55, what would happen if we retired at 60? Well, for 20K a year, we would require a starting pot of 322 thousand pounds. And if we were to retire at 65 years old, this would reduce further to 239k. For 40k, this would take us down to 630k at 60 and 760k at 65. For 60k, we're looking at 1.6 million at 60 and 1.3 million at 65. So I hope you're starting to see that working out how much you'll need in retirement is vastly more complicated than following a simple percentage-based rule. So far, we've looked at three different dimensions, the level of income that you might need, the risk of your investment portfolio, and when you choose to retire. But if I was doing this with a client, there would be many more variables that we could play with to make our plan more realistic and increase our chances of success. We could add in other sources of income, like from property, part-time work, or defined benefit pensions. We could add in other events to make this more realistic, like downsizing or helping out our children financially. We could increase tax efficiency by playing around with other financial products and balancing our income against tax that we're paying elsewhere. We could also look at implementing dynamic spending strategies that varies the income that we draw depending on the performance of our portfolio to further increase our chances of success. The list goes on. But the very first thing that you need to do before you do any of this 
is to sit down and actually work out how much income you'll need to live the quality of life that you want in retirement. Just think about it. If you have not first defined the problem that you are trying to solve, then how are you ever going to know when you found a solution? Which is why you now need to watch this video here where I show you a strategy that you can use to work out exactly how much income you will need in retirement. I'll see you there.